protocols. The thing is, you have three reasons you might want to conform to a protocol or create your own. So we are mostly going to be interested in the last two ones. So if you are planning on uh, digesting that, you have 20 seconds, and I'm going to explain type erasure in the meantime. OK, so type erasure. The thing is, uh, when you want something to be done, but you don't care who's going to do it, you create a protocol, you uh, hide the implementing time behind that protocol, and that's it. That's type erasure. OK. So this is, this is a big word, but in reality, it's really simple. It's something you do all the time when you do delegates. OK, now the more interesting part for us. Um, <clears throat> the second reason is constraining for more functionality. A great example for that is the Ashable protocol from the, from the standard library. So we have our type, and once we conform it to Ashable, we gain uh, many features from the standard library. We gain the ability to store it in a set, use it as a key in the dictionary, and also many, uh, many methods that, are, that require our type to conform to Ashable. And the third reason you might want to conform to a protocol or create your own is providing an anchor point for uh, your extension. Uh, this one, for a good example, we can turn once again to the standard library and look at uh, differentiable. So here we have uh, a book structure, and by conforming to identifiable, we don't add that much information to the compiler, because what it says, it says, uh, for every instance of book, I'm going to have an ID, and this ID is, is going to be of type book ID. So we didn't add any information to the compiler. But what it enables us to do is create extension uh, based uh, on this uh, protocol. Here we have a function that enables us to group uh, our collections of books by any key path from the book ID. Uh, concretely, it means I have an array of books with all my books, and I create easily a dictionary containing as a key uh, an author name and as a value the array of all the books written by this author. But so far, I've shown you only protocols provided by the standard library, but you can also create your own. If we take back an example of a uh, map annotation model, we can see we have a location property. This location can be turned into a, a protocol feature. So let's create a dull protocol that's going to be locatable. And once we have this protocol, we have added nothing once again. But what we can do is create extension for it. We can have an extension that's going to say, OK, for every collection of locatable elements, I go, I'm going to want to be able to sort them by the distance to a given location. So I implement my extension, and I have a clean and nice readable way for this, uh, for this method. Which is what is great is that every other structure that's going to conform to locatable is going to benefit from it. So to sum up, when should you conform to a protocol or create your, an existing or create a new, a new one? Well, you have, to ask, you have to ask yourself two questions. The first one is, is it useful? Because you don't want to spend so much time on doing some uh, thing that is way completed for nothing. And the second one is, how much time does it, does it imply? How much work does it imply? Because you'd, the idea is to get quick wins and not spend too much time on some weird uh, extension. To sum up, I'd say uh, you have to think about it to create your own protocol and conform to this protocol. But before you do it, you also have to think about it. Thank you. <laughs>